2017 marks the 40th anniversary of the Apple II, an iconic 8-bit computer. One of my favorite models in the Apple II line is the Apple IIc, a semi-portable Apple II enclosed in a compact package with integrated disk drive, a design that still looks great today. Now I've got a couple of Apple IIs, but the Apple IIc is the machine that I primarily use for playing games. There's just one thing that I wish it had, a proper sound card. The original Apple II used a beeper speaker to produce simple tones and clicks generated by the CPU. Considering the CPU ran at 1 MHz, it was not easy for the Apple II to generate moving graphics while producing sound simultaneously. This made in-game music nearly impossible. Many third-party companies produced their own sound cards for the Apple II line, but none saw the level of game support like the Mockingboard by Sweet Microsystems of Providence, Rhode Island. The Mockingboard was an expansion card. They are very sought after by Apple II enthusiasts and, as a result, can fetch a decent amount of money when they show up for sale. Enter the Mockingboard 4C, a modern Mockingboard clone by Korean Apple II enthusiast Ian Kim. You might notice that the Apple IIc isn't tall enough to accept an Apple II expansion card. Now, the Apple IIc doesn't have any internal expansion slots. However, the new Mockingbird 4C installs directly onto the logic board. So let's take a look at the kit itself. The kit includes the Mockingboard itself, what appears to be some supporting wires, maybe some speakers. Let's open these up and have a better look. There appears to be two speakers in here, along with some documentation, including some very nice instructions. Now, let's take a look at the board itself. Wow, this is pretty cool. It even comes with its own CPU. Now that we have what we need, let's get the Apple II and start taking it apart. My one complaint about the Apple IIc is how difficult it is to disassemble. There are a few dozen plastic tabs and parts that will easily break, so you have to be extremely careful. I've already removed all of the screws to expedite this a bit. Now that we have its silicon exposed, let's take a look at the CPU. Fortunately, the CPU in the Apple IIc is in a socket, which will make installing this kit a lot easier. I'm going to remove the CPU and plug this into the Mockingboard itself. Now, you don't have to do this as it ships with its own CPU, but I'm going to plug in my original CPU to try to keep all of the original parts together. After you plug it in, it actually fits surprisingly well in that there's really not much movement here. The socket keeps it well secured. The instructions call for removal of the keyboard brace that sits just underneath the keyboard. I was a little skeptical to remove this piece, fearing that the rigidity of the keyboard would be compromised. A couple of plastic tabs and the brace can easily be removed. Surprisingly, it doesn't seem to change much. I'll keep the plastic brace around for spare parts. So, let's take a look at some of these wires. There's actually two speakers included, which is nice considering the card is capable of stereo sound. There's also a wire to enable controlling the Mockingboard's volume using the volume knob on the Apple IIc. According to the install documentation, there is a pin on this hybrid IC that I'll need to solder a wire to. Well, that's easy enough. Not the cleanest soldering job, but it'll do the trick. Now to connect the two speakers and set them into place. I thought about using hot glue to attach these, but I didn't want to risk them coming loose and damaging the logic board. So I decided to create these plastic sleeves and use epoxy to bond them to the inside of the case instead. It actually works pretty well. The kit also includes this auxiliary jack if you don't want to use these internal speakers. But I didn't want to drill a hole in the case if I didn't have to. I may change my mind once I hear these speakers though. Okay, let's get the Apple IIc assembled and test this out. Whoa! The documentation mentions that the original Mockingboard needed to be installed in slot 4 on the larger Apple II computers. As such, you'll need to assign the Mockingboard to the slot 4 address using a command in AppleSoft Basic or the Monitor program. Once that's keyed in, you can launch your Mockingboard test disk and...
Now let's take a look, or rather listen, to a couple of these supported games. The audio output using the auxiliary jack is a little bit hot, but not too bad. The included speakers sound about as well as you expect, not that great. Now, there's at least a few dozen software titles that will take advantage of the Mockingboard. And a little over 100 US dollars, I think it's a pretty good deal, especially if you play a lot of Apple II games. It's always nice to have that card available for any software that's capable of using it. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of the Mockingbird 4C and I'll catch you in the next one.